Let's learn how to take a hand-drawn image and add color and shading to it in Photoshop. So you can use any hand-drawn image for this. You can photograph it or scan it into, into your computer. And then you're going to need to open it into Photoshop and select and mask your character so that you don't have a background, just like I don't have a background here. Um, so if you have not added a layer mask to anything before, I do have a masking tutorial in my videos as well. Um, but basically you're just going to go to the quick selection tool and you're going to click inside of your character until the entire character is selected. The outside edge of that character is selected. And then you're going to click the layer mask icon down here, the little Japanese flag. And it should add a mask over here that will take the background away and make it look like this transparency right here. Once you've done that, you're going to go to File, Export, Quick Export as PNG. And when you save something as a PNG, it saves without the background, as long as there's no background there. So that is what we want. Then once you're done with that, you can go ahead and open that PNG back into Photoshop, and then we will be ready to start our coloring, which is the really fun part of this process. So once you have your PNG open, we are going to select our character again. We're gonna do that by holding down the command key and clicking on the thumbnail of this layer one. After you've done that, we need to create a new layer. I can click my new layer tab down here to do that. I can also go to my three little lines here and add new layer. Either way works. I'm gonna pull that layer underneath my drawing and then I'm going to add a layer mask to it with the selection that I've made. So I'll just click on my little layer mask icon here and you can see my little puffin silhouette that's perfectly aligned to my puffin drawing. I'm gonna call this color one and then I'm going to start adding color to this. I'm just gonna do that with a regular brush tool so I can click on my brush. I do wanna use a soft round brush and I use, usually like to keep it semi hard so I'm not in a super soft brush, I'm not in a super hard brush, I'm kind of right here in the center even though I have chosen the soft round brush. And I'm in a nice pretty blue here so I'm gonna start painting this wing. Now, one step I did not show you did not realize I still had this on. You, as you start painting the wing of this color layer, are not going to be able to see it because you need to actually put a blend mode on this first layer here, this layer one. To do that, you're gonna go up to where it says normal, click here uh, to get your drop down menu, and then go down to multiply. And there you're gonna be able to see all of the details. Whoops, I'm painting in the wrong layer all of the details of your drawing while still being able to paint into that drawing. Now, one thing that you might wanna do as well as you're painting along here, if you overpaint in an area, you can hit E to get to your eraser tool and erase out. You can also do a Command Option Z to walk anything back as you're going along. You may also want to make a selection of certain areas where you know you want there to be a nice hard edge and you don't want to overpaint. So you can go in and make a selection and that's the nice thing about already having a mask here is you don't have to worry about adding selections. And anything that um, would go off the edge is not going to show because we do have a mask. So I'm gonna start painting this in, hit a Command D when you need to deselect that. And then I'm just gonna I'm, I'm just gonna be a little sloppy with this because I'm just trying to go rather quickly. But you take your time and make it look really nice. So I can paint as much as I want here. Again, I can hit E to get back to my eraser tool and go back if I need to. And right now I'm pretty happy with that. So now I need a second color. Now I'm gonna just create a new color layer. I could go through the entire process of what I just did to create the first color layer, but there's a much simpler way of doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this new layer icon here, and then I am going to duplicate just this mask. So I'm gonna click on the mask, hold my option key down, and click and drag that mask to the layer two. I can title this color two, and then I can start painting. So once we're here, I can start with a different color. I can grab any color that I would like. The nice thing about doing this whole 
colorization process like this as well is let's say later on I really don't like that blue. I want to switch that blue out. I can go in and I can do a color overlay just on that layer and it will change that blue without having to repaint all of that. So if that's confusing, let me show you what I mean. I will just go ahead and do that once I get a little bit of this orange painted in here. Um, so if I go back here to this color one, and I could also change this to blue so that I know, but um, I could double click on this layer, go into color overlay, click on the words color overlay, and as you can see, I can just kind of go in and start changing up that color to whatever I want. Um, I'm going to hit cancel because I actually like the blue color, so I'm pretty happy with that. I can also go back in here and of course erase out or paint in. And if you need to get this color again, just hit I to grab that color and then B to get to your brush. So I'm going to continue to do this so that you guys can kind of see um, the finished product and then I'll come back to you. Okay, a little tip here with painting. Um, really precise areas is you can hold the shift key down and if you just kind of go to where you want your brush to end it will create a straight line in between those two points. So sometimes that's a much more precise way of painting areas. So just FYI. So another little tip, if you have something like that has stripes or spots or anything like that, where you have a smaller detail on top of a larger color, you can always put that other color underneath and then as you paint underneath that original color, you don't have to paint around it, you can just kind of paint through it and that original color will still show. Okay, so this is a pretty whimsical looking little guy now, and he's looking pretty good, but he needs some shading as well. So to do that, we are going to create a new layer on top of our image layer here. So I'm gonna go up to the top and click on my new layer tab. Now with that, I'm also going to copy one of these layer mask icons up here. So I'm going to, or layer masks up here. So I'm gonna click on the layer mask icon while holding that option key and drag it up to layer six or whatever layer your layer is there above your image layer. Um, once you've done this, we can start adding some shadows. So to do that, we're gonna to go to our polygonal lasso tool and up here where it says feather, you'll see that my feather is set to 10 pixels. Yours is probably set to zero. I want you to go ahead and try 10 pixels. You may need to change this a little bit, so, um, but we're gonna test it and see. Um, and then click and draw a triangle with your polygonal lasso after you've changed this um, feathering. And then we will check our feathering by hitting Q. And you can see how this is kind of soft here. That's exactly what we want because we don't want to have really harsh shadows that have really hard lines. We want a really soft line. So since I have that, I'm going to hit Q again and then Command D to deselect. Then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna select the areas where I think there should be some shadows. So with shadows, we also wanna think about our light source. If we have our light source coming from this direction and kind of up above our puffin, a lot of our shadows are gonna fall on the opposite side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just kind of think about where generally those would be. And I'm gonna to start to select those areas with my polygonal lasso tool. Now to add another selection, I need to hold the shift key down to start that selection. But it's really important that you don't continue to hold the shift key down because if you do, you won't get the precision that you can get without holding it. If you hold it down, it will only allow you to do certain angles as you're clicking through. But every new selection that you do, click the shift key to start it, and then you can start selecting. 
Now, once you've done this, we are going to dump some black paint on here. So we're gonna to go to our paint bucket, choose black, and we're just gonna click maybe once or twice to set that black paint on there. Now, oh, you know what I did? I made a mistake there. Uh, make sure you are on the layer that you just created that is on top of your image. And then I'm gonna try that again. There we go. Now, of course, this is way too dramatic. It's way too dark, but I can change that just by going up here to my blend mode. And this time I'm gonna take it down to soft light. And there you can see we have just some really nice soft shadows. Now, if they're not perfect, you can always go in and go back with your paint, paint blush, paint brush with a uh, little bit of black and you can soften these up. At this point, it might be a good idea to take the softness of your brush back up and you could even take the opacity down just a little bit. Oh, actually, what did I do? I think I took the hardness up, so I'll take the softness up, which means taking the hardness down. So there we go. Now, one thing you'll notice is because I left this blank, it's not allowed, it's not really showing those shadows too much. So if you do have a lot of areas where it might be white, you might want to go in and put like an off-white color if you are trying to add shadows back in there with a the blend mode, because otherwise it may not show those as much. All right. Now again, if you dislike what you're seeing, if you want to undo any of those shadows, um, you can always go in with a very soft eraser and kind of take those out too or soften them a little bit and that's fine as well. And that is pretty much it. Um, there's so much flexibility with this. Once you're done, you can always go in and um, add color overlays or not. You can change these things out. Um, without really affecting the shadows. So it gives you a lot of uh, wiggle room in terms of changing colors for different uh, color schemes or different um, types of artwork that you're creating. So have fun coloring your drawings and I look forward to seeing what you create.